Guys, I finally have every single part I need to finish this Falcon. But the big question is, do I have the time, or the ability, or the energy? Yes, I do. Our chief engineer spends most of his time in his machine shop, testing his automatic It has been an absolute while again. since we had a video on this car, and I'm gonna bring you back up to speed on this. We'll do a recap of where we're at on it, and we, like I got a mouse in my pocket, you know it's just me in here, of where I'm at on it and what I need to do. Okay, so here's the car. It is a 302 T5. It's got the factory eight inch with 350s and a limited slip in it. Mustang two front end, coilovers, four link in the rear, coilovers. That's the situation. I got this car in boxes, bits, and parts and pieces um, from my grandpa who bought it from my grandpa. Um, from, wait, from my dad who bought it from my grandpa. And uh, so I guess I'm the third owner, but really the second because my dad never did anything with it. But anyways, um, yeah. So this is my grandpa's car. He bought it new in 1963 on a summer vacation. And when I got it, it was in boxes. And I've restored it once and I had it on the road. And now it's, it's uh, V2.0. So anyways, okay. So here's where we're at, drivetrain's installed. I just bought air conditioning for the car. So it's right there and right there. And look at that mess, oh God, that gives me anxiety. And the only thing I am missing that's gonna be on the way is the front end kit because this is just a, a power steering and an alternator dress, which I'll probably end up using on my F100. But anyways, so I got um, a front end kit coming from CVF that puts the compressor right here. And anyways, I got everything coming. I got that coming. So what I need to focus on now is wiring. So I've got like, you know, wires here and putting the interior back together. Of course, it's pulled apart because of wiring. And I've got all the EFI stuff over there. Uh, we decided that we're just going to get this thing running with a carburetor. Maybe down the road we'll throw the EFI on it. And uh, then I need to build an exhaust for this car and fire the motor. And this is an engine I built here in the, in the shop. So, you know, good luck, I guess, right? We'll see how it goes. But what I really need to do is just get in here and see where I'm at with the wiring. I'll pull all the EFI stuff out of it, sort it, pack it away get it stored, and then we'll start looking through where we're at on wiring and where, like where we want to put the coil and the engine bay wiring and all that stuff. So let's start looking at that and then maybe we can get this thing like 80% wrapped up so we can start to uh, build an exhaust for it, maybe get it up on the lift, get that Mustang out of the way, get it up on the lift, look underneath and all that stuff. So wiring is going to be step one. Okay, I wanted to show you guys this. I'm sure you can hear that clunking in the background. Let me show you what this is. This is a tumbler that my grandpa made. He was a machinist, and in my opinion, a, geni a genius. And uh, anyways, I ended up with a lot of his stuff after he passed. He passed away several years back. Uh, the car, you know, um, my, my biggest prized possession to him. Let me, let me show you this guy here. That's him right there. That's a poster they made uh, for him at, uh, we used to call it the Rocket Factory, but he worked for Aerojet, and he was in the aerospace in, uh, industry for, well, his career. But anyways, he made this out of bits, parts, and pieces, and uh, it's a tumbler, and I've been looking at it, and I'm like, what is this made out of? Some electric motor out of something, I don't know. And then he made a, a reduction gearbox that runs off a belt. This is the sewing machine belt, and this is, uh, this is actually a belt I got from Harbor Freight. When I got all this stuff, the belts were all cracked and everything. But let me show you, it's a tumbler, and knowing my grandpa, he probably used it for... Uh, for brass for hand loading ammo. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that because the YouTubes. But I uh, I hand cut, I hand cut, no I didn't, you damn liar. <laughs> I uh, CNC cut a bunch of these um, little medallion metal plates just of my logo that I'm gonna put on a car. Every time I finish a car, I'm just gonna put, or work on a car or whatever, I'm gonna put one of these on there. Anyway, it's like, a, like this one's rounded, so it's gonna go on a piece of DOM tubing. Anyways, I wanted to see how this would work in this uh, in this tumbler. I just got some Harbor Freight media. This isn't the ceramic stuff, it's like resin, but it's hard. Um, anyways, th that's what I got going on in here. We're gonna let it run for the rest of the day and you know see where it's at. So you're gonna hear that thing constantly going in the background. It uh, hopefully it won't be too obnoxious. Sometimes you gotta get a little push. But anyway, that's a home built tumbler. 
anyways, that kind of stuff is super cool to me. And when I'm messing with all this old stuff that used to be my grandpa's, I find a lot of uh, stuff like that that he built that just kind of, I don't know, I kind of treasure that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, wiring, step one. All right, I got at least two wires I gotta go through the firewall, so. Let me see, what is this? That must be the main power in the box. Okay, we got those wires pulled through. I thought there was more wires that needed to come through, but <laughs> apparently I was pretty close. So those two, and then I got that, I might just pull that out, that power wire, and then whatever this is, and pull them through the same hole. Cause this is like, I got a lot of room left on that sucker. I think that's what I'm going to do. And then, uh, what are these? Let's see. These are... That's a horn and fan. So I need to work up a fan relay, which I'll probably put right here. Run over to the fans. All right. I think we got it figured out. So this is an alternator power wire. And this is going to be ignition. And then we've got... What was the purple again? What was that? Oh, starter solenoid. So that's going to go that way. The starter solenoid's down. I got a gear reduction starter, so it's going down there. And then alternator's this side. And I guess I'll put coil. I'll run it out over here, I think. I want it away from all the wires, so we'll probably run it out off of here. Let me grab it out of the, out of the cabinet. Oh, parts. Let's see. Where's our coil? I know we got a new one. Is that our... Oh, there's some other things to consider. I forgot. We gotta do that. There's our coil. Here's our. We'll use this bracket. No reason we can't use that bracket, right? Okay, that's what we'll do. So I gotta look at this. See how that's gonna wire. All right, I figured the wiring out for that thing, and I'm gonna wire it over here. The battery is gonna go over there, so I'm gonna have to run power up under the core support back over there and I'm going to mount that thing kind of sideways so you can get to the uh, adjustments there um, I do have a rib nut actually the right size for these of course everything's made in China now these are eight millimeter and I just so happen to have a bunch of these but I don't have the right setter for my my tool I don't even remember where I got those eight millimeter ones, but this thing is ridiculously cool. This thing just runs off of a socket head cap screw and that's, that's how it works, but I don't have the right size. So I'm just going to have to uh, bolt it the way that they, uh, the way that they come. So I need to get underneath the backside of the fender and I need to take the wheel off anyways, because I got to measure that diameter of that adjuster down there because I'm gonna cut out a tool on the plasma table so I can adjust it, because I don't have one. So I need to take the wheel off anyway, so we'll go ahead and do that. I don't even remember putting that there, but I guess that's how that goes. Gosh. You give me a little reach around, 3,000. Let's do it by braille, just whatever feels right. One, bang. Guys, I, I really, I really like these unibits, these step bits. This is just the cheap ones from Harbor Freight, but man, they, they get it done. They work good. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, so here's a question for the internet. When you apply Loctite, how do you do it? Are you a like up and down the whole thing guy? Like just gob it on? Or do you just hit it in a small spot like that and then let that nut carry it down the rest of the threads? Tell me in the comments, how do you put on Loctite? What's your MO? What's your method there? Reach around 9,000, here we come. Get the ranch. I kind of tend to just like put it on a little bit of the threads and let that fastener work it in the rest of the way. It's just me though. I don't know if it's right or wrong. These are stray dogs, man. They're usually cool, but shit, everybody's got their damn dog running around this place. I live out in the country, so. 
kind of surprising. I, I live out of the county. I won't really say country. Anyway. Okay. Let's see how well this box fits up on here. All right, we got our box mounted. They said it mounted away from engine heat. That's probably as far as I can get. I wanted to mount it in the glove box, but then I did the unlikely thing and I read the directions and it said, don't mount it in an enclosed place like the glove box. So this is where we're at. Okay, this is cool because coil is probably gonna go right here. So I'm gonna have electronics right there. I do gotta, like I said, run the power over to my battery over there, but this is, uh, this is pretty, pretty good. Gonna be pretty sanitary. Check this thing out. Check out how this works. So you take your fitting. In. To your hole. Boom. Check that out. I'm ready to go. Boom. Now I don't have a nut on the other side. It's going to save me a bunch of time. I just got to tighten that down. And this is going to go up to the distributor. And then I'm going to have a couple wires coming off here, going to the coil. And then my power wire for the coil is right there. So all my wiring for that stuff is going to be on that side. That's going to work out real nice. I'm going to take a break real quick. I got to get, uh, got to get the kids fed. My Mama dropped a pan on her toe. <laughs> she's kind of she's kind of out of commission, so I got to go in there and uh, I think I'm gonna drag everybody over to somewhere quick to get some get a bite to eat, and then I'll uh, I'll head back out here. So, all right. Yes, I'm using a chrome socket. It's gonna be all right. Life's too short. <laughs> These clearly aren't even tight. So this is the part of the episode where I wander around for like 15 minutes aimlessly looking for the thing that I just had in my hand. All right guys, this is the next day. We got everybody fed. We're back in the shop now. And now I'm to the point where I'm doing what we call in the industry, and by the industry I mean the aviation industry, called shooting wires. So I got my box laid out here. I can't remember where I stopped the video, but it looks like a mess, right? But I was inside and what I need is I need a constant 12 volt for the coil, which is going to be this pink wire. That's constant 12 or not constant, but keyed to the coil. And then I need a keyed trigger to this, but this is also going to get constant power through this to the battery. So that keyed power is just what like turns it on, I guess, through internal relays or whatever. So I got all that figured out. I went under the dash and this is why i bought a unit with like more accessories because guys i'm telling you like i in this car I used to have like an eight channel or eight whatever <laughs> not channel shit circuit like an eight circuit box and it was like just enough to run everything well i got one with some accessories this time um because i, I knew i was going to add stuff eventually and i'm running this msd box off of one of those accessories which worked out really great so now I'm just, I, I had that accessory wire like tucked up under the loom because I was like, hey, I'll probably use this in the future. Well, the future is now. So I'm underneath the car right now, underneath the dash, unclipping that thing, and I'm going to run it out through this guy here before I run it over to my trigger wire. So what the plan is here is I'm going to get everything routed right here, and then I'm going to cut it and put a plug in somewhere in there. So I'll show you what that looks like. It's going to be like one of those weather pack connectors or Deutsch connectors or whatever they are. I'll show you that, but I'm just going to get back under there and keep running these wires. So nothing like super exciting to see right now, but I'll bring you back when I get all the wires tidied up under here and we're going to put that plug in. Okay. I pulled my wires through. I think I've got everything in the engine compartment that I need. Have you guys seen these? So look at this. So that is, it says keyed ignition to MSD. That's a label that I made on a label printer that I just found out about this. 
You can heat shrink, you can print a label on heat shrink tubing and put it on your stuff. How awesome is that? I, I had no idea. I think it's the coolest thing ever. And I'm using the snot out of it. Because usually when I'm running these wires, guys, I'm losing track of it. And I'm going back and forth like four or five times. Like, oh, what was this one to? What was that one to? Oh, blah, 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 this and that. But now it, uh, it's working a little bit better than that for me with that label maker. That thing's awesome. All right, now I'm going to tidy up these wires and we'll get a kind of a route figured out going. Maybe some loom figured out. Yeah. Sorry guys, I missed a few steps. I, I get going and I forgot the camera. Uh, so I'm putting this weather pack connector on right now. So it has uh, these real small connectors like this and a special crimping tool. So they've got these, uh, these little rubber deals on here that kind of insulate them from uh, weather, I suppose. So we'll get that in there and then you lay this sucker in there on the wire. You lay it in there like that and then you just get two crimps. One crimp right there, one crimp right here. And these are what the uh, crimpers look like. And after I do it, I always like to give it a little, little pull test to make sure it's not gonna come out. So that's in there like that. And now let me get the other part of the connector. Okay, now once you slide these in here, they sort of lock in place and uh, they only go one way. So it, it might take me a minute to figure out which way it needs to go. Let's see. No, oh, that's the right way. <laughs> they kind of just clip in so you just put them in there and then uh, if you're pushing it you would you would be able to feel it kind of clip into place I got to even those out but that part sits in there okay and then I, I got the uh, heat shrink tubing here so we'll run that down on it If you do this right, you end up with something that actually looks like something. Now you got something. I just got to put that plug back in there. Boy, that's warm. I got my two-step wire in there now. So four wires here, because this plus the coil, uh, trigger wire, or the coil power, which I'm not gonna put in a loom. I'm just gonna let it go straight. And then um, the, uh, I just wanted the, the MSD box to be on a plug. You know, that way in case the, the box takes a crap, I can just unplug it and plug it back in. So I'll plug back a new, a new one back in. All right, I got them pinned out. Or I got them pinned rather. So this, I didn't want to put the coil wire on to a plug because I didn't want it to lose any of its amperage going to the coil, which I thought was smart. So I just left it heavy. And then that's going to be our plug right there. So we'll plug that. That's going to meet up with this side. I just got to make sure I um, pin them correctly on the other side of the plug. And then this is just going to be ring connected over there. And that is good. The only other thing I got going out of the MSD box is battery power and ground which I don't know why they gave me such a short ground. I mean, kind of limits your options, but the power is like twice as long. That doesn't make any sense. Anyways, and then the, the plug for the uh, ready to run distributor. So I still gotta set the initial time on the engine and all that stuff too. So I ordered all new front dress, so I might as well just take all this crap out, take the radiator out in, um, in preparation for that stuff. And when I'm doing that, I'll set timing on it too. I got an adjustable timing um, pointer. We'll set it over to top dead center when we're in there, while we're at it. Very nice. All right, guys, it's been a few days since I was back out here. We left off with the wiring. Something cool came in, the front end kit uh, from CVS, CV, CVF, not CVS, CVF came in. 
So all that is in, but what we need to do to get that to work is I got to take all this old stuff off the front and I've got a timing tab I need to set down there. So what we'll do is we'll pull all that stuff off. I got to pull that valve cover off because this is where number one piston is in a Ford. And uh, we will set number one top dead center, set our uh, timing pointer there, and then we'll start uh, putting the other stuff back on. But for now, I need to get my radiator out and the front dress off as much as I can, well, all the way off, and then we'll start building it back up. I'm really excited to see all this stuff together. And I got the belts too, so I'll have everything for the front of this engine. Only thing I do have to do the different is I'm not gonna use this Fox body pump. I'm actually gonna poach the pump off my truck motor, this uh, this GM style pump, it's kind of what it comes with or what it's made for. So we're gonna run this pump, which means when it comes to putting my truck together, I'm probably gonna use this front end kit on my truck because it doesn't have air conditioning and probably not gonna run AC in that truck. So let's get that pulled off. Okay, we got the front end kit off for the front end dress off. Now what I'm talking about with the pointer is right here. So it's an adjustable timing pointer. So what I need to do is get a socket on this, roll it over, and what we'll do is we'll pull the valve cover off here. And what we can do is we can look at the intake valve and just watch the timing. I'll stick something down the spark plug hole too so we can kind of see where the dwell is. When that piston starts to dwell, we'll go ahead and call that top dead center. All right, check out the jewelry. All right, I've actually got a piston stop. I'm gonna use that. All right, I've got it set at top dead center and I figured out the distance on the piston. For whatever reason, my piston stop didn't reach it. Um, I could have sworn I used this to degree the can. I don't know, I might be losing my mind. But anyways, uh, that is set, but check how far off this is off the balancer. Now th this timing tab is, is totally arbitrary. It's adjustable, but the tab on there, or the zero mark on the balancer is way down here. And this is as far as I can get this thing to go down. So I'm gonna have to get a timing tape and just lay it over that, like one of those stickers, you know? So I'm gonna go inside and order that before I forget it. But yeah, that is good to go. Look at this jewelry. I, uh, I really hope this thing stays together. Okay guys, I got the timing tab situated. I had to do a little bit of modifying. Let me show you what I did. Okay, so there's the timing tab and you can see there's a slot down there and a slot right there. Now up there, that hole is where the top one should go. Now my understanding is this probably is for a 50 ounce motor. That's a 28 ounce, um, harmonic balancer and this motor is 28 ounce. So it makes sense that those don't really line up. All I did is I moved the top mount to the bottom one and then I drilled and tapped a, uh, the quarter 20 hole in this back part just to kind of hold it there. I found number, I found top dead center on number one and then just lined up the tab there. So right there it's uh, at zero degrees top dead center. It's not, there's a little bit of a an angle there so you kind of depending on where you view it it may look a little bit different from zero degrees but i mean i've I've had these things apart and they've been you know from the factory like as much as five degrees off so it's a kind of a close enough deal and that is definitely closer than it's probably ever been okay so that's good we're going to move out from there we're going to put the valve cover back on so i don't drop anything down there uh, all that looks good and we will start addressing the front dress I also don't have a dipstick for this motor. I just realized that. So that's another thing I'll have to figure out what I want to do with. All right, time to start putting the front dress kit on the car. 
there's not really instructions like which end goes first, but there's individual instructions. So I think I'm going to start with the alternator. I'll fit that up and then I'll just fit kind of dry fit everything up and then I'll bring it back and show you what it looks like. And if I run into anything, we'll talk about it. So this alternator is going to work. It took all the front end kit stuff. The shaft is the same size, apparently. So the fan that they provide fits and the pulley fits. I'm just leaving these loose because I got to put Loctite on them. But the nut just, uh, it buzzed down fine and everything. So the only thing I got to do is this distance in here is different. So I got to figure out where it's going to be front to back set up on the other pulleys. And then I'm just going to spin a new, <coughs> excuse me, spin a new, um, bushing out of aluminum there for that but that's that's not the kit's problem that's my problem for using stuff that uh that's a, a gm one wire so that's just that's what you get when you do stuff like this but and don't come at me for using gm parts i mean come on guys that's ridiculous there was a a guy on the on the internet the other day some dude on a, one of the falcon forums that i'm on he wanted to share that he got his falcon running and he had a hei style distributor in there and uh one of these older dudes i don't know he's probably 60s just real mean to this dude about you know using gm shit and gm design and you know no ford guy's gonna give him respect or anything like that because it had a gm hei distributor in it and i was like bro um, in case you didn't know, the overhead valve V8 was designed by General Motors. So, fucking come off it. It's ridiculous, bro. Like, to be stuck there mentally. It's a deficit in the head. Okay, moving right along. We got the power steering pump mocked up and kind of a happy little accident. Uh, my uh, down tube support right here. Boy, that just works, doesn't it? <laughs> now, that's all the way out so it's not going to get any closer it'll just come further away but man uh i couldn't have planned that better so <laughs> i didn't i really didn't think that power steering pump would be sticking out that far but you know is what it is ac pump coming up next right there and then we'll hang actually i think first we'll hang all the harmonic balancer stuff on okay so halfway through now uh, i got the water pump or the uh power steering pump stuff on but i think they changed their brackets halfway they made mention of like a different style or whatever and but the direction still spoke of the old style and the pictures were different and the placing of some of the stuff was different but i got it figured out on to the ac compressor now okay guys still a lot more work to do but we got the ac mounted everything seems to line up well like if we come down here and we look like that way like it's all in a line so I think the only other thing I might do is just for my own brain, I might shoot a laser across it just to make sure, but I'm pretty sure it, it's right. It looks good. So I got to press on the water pump pulley. I got the tool for that. So I'm going to do that. And then, oh, idler. There's an idler pulley too. I'm going to do the idler pulley, water pump pulley, or excuse me, power steering pulley. And then that's done. So we'll do that real quick. Okay guys, so there's a couple things. There's one, there's one thing you should learn about me if you don't already know, and that is I'm not very smart, but I'm smart enough to know when I need to admit defeat. Check this out. So right here in the casting, you can see that it's broken and it is broken because that's the back of the casting and the casting has come apart from itself. Uh, I was tightening this down to that. And uh, I'm an idiot, so I hit it with the old Ugga Dugga gun. And uh, it shot that thing about three feet out into the shop. And then this valve followed it. <laughs> so, so that pump is destroyed. Thankfully, I was able to get the pulley off of it. And the pulley still seems uh, straight and in good, good repair. But that press fit was really, really tight. It just did not want to go on. So um, I'm going to measure it. Um, the uh id here and the od on whatever new pump i get and see if it if this needs like i don't know a thousandth or something taken off of it or maybe i'll just heat it and then put it on i don't know but it was it was so tight that i was worried about damaging it putting it on so uh that pump is now trash i'm gonna get a new pump ordered and on the way and uh i could probably go down like o'reilly's or something and pick one up but anyways we're gonna wrap this up for the day guys i think i've gotten plenty done here more than i expected to get done i gotta get this car out of the way anyways that thing's got to go back to uncle mike this week so i gotta focus on straightening that thing up vacuum it got 
one or two little spots I need to color sand, buff it, just get it real pretty and get it out the door. So anyways guys, thanks so much for coming around. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, make sure you click like, comment, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. This Falcon is gonna make some noise real soon. I'm here for it, I hope you are too. We'll see you on the next one.